So we've officially done the Sunday show once already because we've done it yeah. in slow mo. So this bit is deja vu. Now, bit of deja vu <laughs> going on here. So this is now uh, Sunday show <laughs> take, take two. two. everybody, welcome to the Sunday Morning Show. Good morning, Lester. Good morning, Dan. What a busy week. You, you've been busy. I've been full on busy, busy, busy. 17 videos <laughs> I've done this week. So I'm trying to get a backlog of videos because I may, I'm, I'm concerned about the winter. Yeah, I mean, to be fair. Today. Yeah, I mean, it's, Storm it's, Alex it's is pretty horrendous out there at the moment. It's an early start today. Yeah. We are here before the shop opens trying to keep up with everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mental, so isn't it? thank you very much for my coffee. You're welcome. You're very nice this morning. Yeah. Could very do well, another very one welcome. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After we drank the first one in the previous, previous video. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so this week I have been down to China Fleet. Yep. I've been filming down there with uh, Will Farley, my brother Paul, and James Ruth. James Ruth, it's been on the show before. He's done a video with me on a bunker play, which if you have a chance to watch it, I'll pop the description in, uh, put, I put, I'll put it in the description, the link right. to it. Um, yeah, very good player, European tour player, been through tour school a number of times, you know, very, very solid player. And we played China Fleet, and um, I won't give too much away, but birdies, I've never seen so many birdies, and eagles. It was just a, f a festive, but not by me, I'll no, add, all right? <laughs> not by me. That's becoming a bit of a trend. <laughs> but what's going on at the moment? But um, so yeah, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. That one's going to be out in probably I don't know about five weeks or so. Yeah. Um, where we get over to China Fleet and share you that one. We so got, we've got some good content coming. up. We have. We? Yeah, we have got some really good stuff good coming out. Yeah, and, great um, course vlogs. But I, it'll be interesting. And I'd like to get feedback with the way this one's worked because it's the first one I've done with just pros. Um, and obviously the, the, the level of, or the quality of golf, certainly with the guys that are playing in it, is, it will go, it just goes up like this. I'm not, obviously we've done yeah. Paul and I, or Paul, me, you, Paul and Will, yeah. um, but this, this one obviously with James added into it, it's just, just obviously just pro. So it'd just be interesting to see what the comments are gonna be like for oh, yeah, just it. pros on the, on, in a course for like whether you guys wanna see more of that or whether you guys wanna see bits and pieces of that, but still like the amateur stuff as well. I think that that's quite key. There's a good blend really, and there's a bit for everybody, isn't there? If somebody I think wants so. to see a high, slightly higher handicap or mid handicap, you've got Lee playing some of the, some of the top courses, yeah. you know. I'm a very amateur amateur, so. Um, yeah, and then some good, really good players. Um, On that note, Oh, amateur, amateur. Yeah. Not Talk to me. Like so. There's, there's n oh. Last what? week, Leicester yeah. announced obviously that he was playing in the uh, Devon Amateur Gold Medal yeah. Championships. Not no. seeing it. No. Um, not seeing. Yeah, trophy. it's in the post. Is it in the post? <laughs> <Of course, laughs> small trophy. No. So I went to Tiverton on Sunday. It was um, a revised format of 18 holes due to COVID. Yeah. Um, Etc. Um, I haven't played county championship for maybe. Long five, time. six, seven years possibly. Yeah. Not really been that competitive, but as it was 18 holes, I thought possibly give it a go. Yeah. Um, also need to get some rounds in, I've struggled to play Saturday, it's so busy up here and I play football. Yeah. So just to get a round in as well. Um, played Tiverton, which was unbelievable. Really good condition. Good condition. Greens were as good as I've putted on really? anywhere this year. Um, so thanks to George and his staff at Tiverton. So what happened then? Because ultimately yeah. you were going to go, you, you said you're going for it. Yeah, right? I it, said I was going to hit driver everywhere, got there and I remembered how tight it was. And I so, said four under was going to win it. Yeah, no, that would have won it by four a shots. Look, would it? Yeah. Well, I did say it'd win um, it. It was windy to start with. Was the it? greens were quick but bouncy. Right. So almost played a little bit linksy, even though it's a, a tree line golf course. Yeah. Um, got off to a decent start, birdied the first. So nice. par five, hit par five. two iron, two iron, just short of the green, chipped and putted. Tight, narrow, narrow yeah, hole. Yeah, you can't hit it right off the tee, lose your ball. No, be gone out. A um, right. couple of mistakes. The, the third hole's a quirky hole. Yeah. Made it, made it. It's on a slide of a mountain with water on the right hand side. Yeah. Uh, made a seven, literally mm -hmm. from nowhere on there, and then. I just, I had 38 putts. I was going to say, what happened with the putting then? Yeah, not good. I used the Scotty Cameron 
um, which I haven't really. But you love the look of that. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's it, one that you come to the shop, you keep picking it up. You yeah, like the look I, of it. Yeah, I can't blame the putter. It was more um, a case of how were you I was feeling? chasing a little bit. Once I'd made a couple of bogeys, I was thinking oh, I need to make this. I was knocking it four or five foot past and then missing back. Right. Were you anxious at all over your putter? No, not really. No, Sometimes I still felt confident. It. Yeah, good. Um, so I shot. I shot. Eight, I had eighty in the end. Um, I also had a bit of an issue with a lost club. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, Where is that? No, Have I you don't hunted know. Everywhere? No, I mean we because we with our course vlogs we obviously play lots of places. We're rushing people a little picking bit. Up people other picking up other people's clubs. Yeah, and I've literally had no lob wedge. So I got on the second hole, went to pull out my 58 and realised it wasn't in my bag. Thought it might be in my car, but it wasn't. Um, so yeah, oh no idea. Possibly Ashbury. Not sure. So I didn't have a lob wedge, which did wasn't. Uh, that's not the main blame. Um, okay. But the. There was one by um, Jack Pope's, so Ryan Pope's brother. Yeah, shot plan. level par, 70. The standard scratch went up to 73. So you didn't go up point one. It was a non-counter, so it was an, it was only for reductions only. That's how difficult it was. So um, I think I was 23rd. You said you were either going to win it or go up point one. Neither. Neither, no. <laughs> Neither happened. So I finished 23rd, which wasn't great, but well, so if right. I had it better, I could have been mid 70s, probably realistically. Yeah. But yeah, it's something to build on, I guess. Of course it is. At least you're back playing a little bit. Yeah. Of it. And on on that note, I've got a question from a chap called Rob Long. Okay, and this I think is it a long question. Well, it is a little bit of a long <laughs> question, yeah. But um, question to discuss: When you start, you're a keen golfer. You yeah. improve, you practice. Your handicap comes tumbling down, yeah. and he says, um, "Fast forward a few years, and you start playing off scratch." Yeah. Okay, so obviously, for you to play off scratch, you have to be an, an elite. Like we're talking about an elite player here to mm -hmm. one to get to scratch, because yeah. that's obviously a very small percentage of anyone in the world gets to scratch. So um, he said that. Uh, then you uh, then you don't play in competitions because you're always up against 18 handicapped golfers who are having a good day. Uh, that's mm. a that that can be taken however you want to take that. But then not not good enough to play for the county in big and in big amateur competitions. There are tons of low handicaps golfers who are being lost to the game. What would yeah. you say to that? Because I I, I have to agree. Me, probably. I would have to agree with what Rob is saying. Yeah. I'm not going to say that. Him coming up against 18 handicappers should put no. him off playing golf. And, you know, for me, when I was playing at that, that level, so playing count, um, club golf in club competitions, I wasn't going for a net goal. I wasn't no. going for the winning of the net event. I was going for the scratch win. So I hope mm. that the golf club that you play at is, is, has a scratch event on each event because that would be... That would yeah. be wrong for the club to not do that, I think, because I think it's something for scratch golfers to have a go for. Yeah, definitely. But there are a lot of players out yeah, there. Lots I mean, of my friends are in that a, boat, I would say. It's a tricky one because you get to a certain age where you don't, you, you've almost reached your level. So when you're 18, 19, if you get off scratch, you'll get in county second team. You might even get a few first team games because they're seeing that they're thinking that you're going to improve. But when you get to sort of late 30s, 40s, and you're off scratch, you're not going to get picked unless you're plus two plus three handicapped because you're not they're thinking the 18 year old who's off scratch is going to improve and get better than you which is true um i would say that's where i've been for the last five six years and yeah the whole this whole youtube and all the experience i'm gaining from playing on your channel and being on your channel well, ins has, has inspired me to play golf so I, i'm of that i'm you almost literally stopped for a while didn't yeah, you in, in, not stopped but you just you you were happy not to play. No, I mean I'm 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 not a win at the moment. I'm not a winter golfer. No, like, so your from, clubs now, literally will go away. From now, generally the last five six years before we started doing the channel, September end of September October, yeah. clubs will go away. Probably pull them out in March. Might hit a few balls in the studio on a few Sundays, but not yeah. play on the golf course. So what happens is I think is that when you get to when you think about the county. They have, I suppose they feel like they have a job or um, part of their process is to develop young kids into potentially becoming professional golfers or yeah. making a career in golf. And the focus maybe has shifted to helping them develop and train them up. So getting them into the county teams, things like that. Yeah. But when I played county, I was like at 16, 17, obviously I was one of the youngest players in the Southwest playing, let alone Devon. Yeah. There was a lot of older guys playing in it, which, was correct, which is not the case no. anymore. So a lot of those guys that I played county golf with, you would be one. Um, Tom Woodhouse, I would say, yeah. is another one. He played, who, he played on um, Sunday. Yeah, he, yeah. He, the great golfer, plus one, yeah. scratch golfer. Um, but nothing 
he doesn't play in anything because he doesn't want to go at 40 years old or 39 yeah. years old, he doesn't want to go and play in a, in a team with 16, 17, 18 year old kids, yeah. basically. He wants to, so his golf has kind of taken a bit of a back seat in, yeah. in that way for county golf. So I, I do get what Rob is saying with yeah. his question. I mean, I just just a sort of side point on that. The two lads I played with on Sunday, I played with a, a lad called Elliot from, I think he was at Fingal to start with, and now he's at Exeter. Mm -hmm. He's off plus one, um, and he's 17, and he was a really nice lad, really good golfer. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, one of the bright young hopes of Devon, but just a really nice guy. And the other lad was called Jack from Tavistock, mm. slightly older, off scratch, really good player as well. Um, got on really well, both of them, thought they were great lads, really good company. Um, enjoyed being on the golf course, and that's that's what I was more concerned about. That because I'm yeah. not that competitive, I'm going to take a day to go and play golf somewhere. Yeah. I want to enjoy it. I want to have a chat with people. Yeah. I want to enjoy my day. I don't want to be playing with people that aren't going to talk to me. Yeah, who are in the zone I'm playing. Just completely in the zone, yeah. and they weren't. They they, they um, changed my whole perception of what it would be like to play county stuff. So what again. is the what is the answer for someone like Rob? Because Set himself personal goals. I mean, my personal goal at the moment is to maintain a scratch handicap for as long as I can. Yeah. I've more or less done it on and off for the last 10 years. I've crept up to one but got back down almost as soon as I went to one. Yeah. So try and keep a scratch handicap. Try and, as your own personal pride, it's nice to say I'm a scratch golfer. Yeah. Um, if that doesn't happen and I, I personally went up to one, two, then I'd be then thinking, well, I want to go back to scratch. Mm. So maybe set yourself a personal goal. I also think, because when I used to um, manage the Devon second team, I actually, the Devon second team was falling, it was kind of falling apart in a way because a lot of counties weren't getting involved with it. Yeah. Because... It was an extra expense, wasn't it? Well, it was an extra expense, but there was a lot of people. So when you finished playing for the mm. first team, when you hit, let's say, 25, 30, yeah. okay, stop playing first team kind of thing, the, the next thing on from that is senior golf. The yeah. senior golf in, in, in England right now, in the, I think in the UK, but certainly England that I know of, yeah. is exceptionally good. Yeah, yeah. You know, you think about the guys that we've got here, uh, Pete, Pete Bicknell, yeah, um, Tim Aggett, who was yeah. secretary. He finished second here. on um, finished, but, Catch Champs. You know, Graham Ruth, all yeah. these guys who love competitive golf, played county golf as youngsters and yeah. have, have worked their way up through, still played county golf in their 40s. Yeah. But now they're able to play senior golf, which is something really good. But the guys in the middle, those sort of 30, 35 to 40, 50 year olds, yeah. those are the guys that have been lost, I think, to possibly the game. So is there, a, is there an opportunity? Would you, let's say, go and play in a county match for, let's say, a mid, a mid, yeah. a mid sort of age? 100%. You know, thirty yeah. like under under fifties or something so like that. I feel that, like I'd have more in common with those people, but yeah. I think like what you've said, you've hit the nail on the head. Like when we were playing county golf, Graham was still playing, which he would have been in his forties, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For um, sure. But nowadays, that the whole um, sort of divide is actually increasing. Yeah. The players are getting younger and more competitive and better. Yeah. And so when you like hit. Maybe it was late 30s, early 40s before that you'd be out of the county scene. Yeah. But now maybe it's late 20s. Yeah. So that gap has is, is, is increased considerably, hasn't it? So there may be a need for a you know, mid or you know, 35 to 50 before you yeah. get into the seniors. But I, I, um, I think you, you're right in that you have to actually, Rob, I think you have to you set goals, yourself definitely. your own goals. And yeah. when you're going out to play, you're not playing against the 18 handicapper. No. I've never thought about playing against no. those guys. And yes, it's nice to win those trophies, yeah. but your, your, your major events are the club championships. They are you know, the scratch events each week. But you want to be winning every single scratch event. When you were playing as an amateur, were you thinking, I want to win this? I, I was personally thinking, I want to get my handicap down. If I win something, it's a bonus. I yeah, wasn't necessarily but, turning but up we to were, a medal we were on a young. Wednesday yeah, thinking we I want to win this. Because what we, what we were focusing on is though we had these ambitions of making a career in golf. Yeah. So we were, we were trying to get our handicaps down so we could play in those big events. Yeah. To then, because if you get into the, uh, to the Caris or the English amateur or the British amateur and things like that, you had to be off plus, plus yeah. handicaps to get into them. And then what happens is once you're in them, you're playing against the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And what happens is at the top level is those off days with those plus two, plus three handicap golfers, when they have an off day, like you've experienced this week, yeah. the standard scratch just goes woof up. Yeah. So you've got so more chance, got more hand, chance yeah. of getting your handicap down. Yeah. Whereas when you come to play at Torquay, you know, and Pete, yeah. I've had chats with Pete Bicknell about this, who's a scratch golfer from our club here. He struggles round here yeah. because what happens is those 
higher handicappers, let's say, I don't know exactly exactly how it all works at the moment, but yeah. they push the handicap, let's say the, yeah. the, 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 the standard scratch up, therefore the, the lower handicappers really struggle to get themselves down low. So you've got, so we were, what I'm saying is we were trying to get on a, a path to get to there, whereas Rob is saying that he's not really ambitious, he's not no. ambitious, he's not, he's not set a goal to go and play in those things, his lifestyle probably doesn't, um, doesn't uh, allow that, but I think the personal goals have got to be, you know, how long can you play off scratch, could you yeah. get a bit lower, you know, it's hard. Yeah. And I think he's absolutely right, there has been a little bit of a loss of focus on, on your, our age group in amateur golf in some ways. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a topic you, I could talk about for Oh, you, we could, and we probably have rattled just, on a bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just because of the fact that, like, for here, the team, the South Devon League team, um, it's, it's any handicap up to 14, yeah. but generally it's of a handicap. So they only pick a couple of low handicappers, a couple of scratch handicappers. Because they want to win. Yeah, and the, the, scra the couple of scratch handicappers at this club are more competitive and better golfers than what I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm first to admit that. So I only get in the team when one or two of them are away. Um, so I'm almost in limbo because yeah, you got no, well, you've got everything to play. handicap yeah. in Devon. Really, we have yeah. the Parker Trophy, which is scratch, but it's on a weekday when I'm yeah. generally working. I get the odd play, the odd one, but yeah. most of it Palo X handicap. Yeah, SDL's handicap. So it's it's difficult. It's, it's, a, tricky, it's, a, yeah. it's a good one, but I think it needs more discussion. And I think Rob, I think it needs more discussion if you're in that sort of age group. I don't know how old you are, but if you're in that age group where you can't, let's say, play senior golf, and you're definitely not playing county golf down down in the junior end, should we say. Yeah. Um, I think it's worth a conversation with your county to say, look, what exactly are you doing for my yeah. age group? You know, because yeah. all, you're all paying your fees for these county counties to help you help you out and pl represent the county and do the teams and things like that. Yeah. Where is that age group being covered? Yes. Right, I've got a question for you. You've got a question. And this is from Millsy Dave. So I'm gonna say his name's Dave Millsy. Dave Millsy, yeah. Um, he is talking about the Padre Harrington step through. Thing. Step through. Okay. Why does he do it? Um, would it benefit him yeah. doing it? Yeah. Um, that's probably the summary of it, really. Okay. So the step through by step Harrington. Step through. Yeah. I mean, why was, did Harrington do it? I mean, it was a thing he did two, three years ago, wasn't it? It was yeah. a big. It was a big. There was a big hoo ha about it. All the commentators, the the, the PJ pros on on Sky were yeah. covering it. It was literally the topic of conversation. I did a little bit of research. I can remember bits of it, but he um, he's someone in his in his forties at the time, and he's, well, he's, he's mid forties now, who had back and neck issues. Mm -hmm. So the modern swing, you'll know more about it than what I do, is very much stable lower body, um, big rotation. Yeah, using the back, um, using, using the, the back, back, using the yeah, basically um, a power move, isn't it? But mm -hmm. with not much leg action. Yeah. Whereas in the past. Nicholas had a left Lots foot movement, legs, yeah. Lee, Lee Whitaker left foot yeah, lift, left foot, yeah. so they, they tended to use more leg action yeah. than what they, the modern day player uses. So it was partly because of his neck and back issues that he was doing that move. Okay. Um, do you want to add anything to that? Well I've tested it, we did a bit with Mark Crossfield on Mark's channel and in the scrambles when we were playing Mark would actually do it so there's, there are there are gains to be had. There will be no links below for that one. No, there will be no links below. <laughs> Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, we did it. he was yeah. doing it in Abu Dhabi actually yeah. and um, there was definitely, I could we could see even on the monitor you could see that his numbers were in, improving yeah. by, by speed should we say but he was definitely getting more yardage when he got onto the golf course with it. So there are gains to be had. And yeah. let's be honest, negatives. Patrick, well, negatives are then then he started to spray it a lot. Yeah. So he couldn't manage the club face from that position no. a lot. So um, he, he would get variables. lots, of, yeah, lots of different. I yeah. mean, it's it's a change to the golf swing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's a change to his golf swing. So um, yeah, he what Mark was doing is he was getting lots more shape. Okay. So he was creating a little bit more shape out of out of when he did it. So he was obviously changing face to path in some ways, yeah. and then and then on occasions he would struggle to control that. Yeah. Now let's be honest, Padre Harrington is the biggest tinkerer in the yeah, whole yeah. of the game, and probably in the history of the game, with it, with regards to golf clubs, his swing, everything. He's always messing about. So Padre's not going to do something Jeez. unless he can see some gains in doing it, isn't he? Yeah. 
Do you remember that he was selling those high tech shoes? They <laughs> literally kept your foot yeah, planted. They had like extra stuff. They had them. And like longer cleat bits coming off. So I remember hitting my first shot and literally nearly breaking my left ankle as I went through. <laughs> so that's thinking, completely that's opposite of what he was saying to start with. Well, because yeah. he was focused on then uh, on all about using the ground and using yeah. the forces at the ground. Then obviously he's created, he's obviously got back problems and now he's trying to get away from, from, from those yeah. sorts of things. But definitely there is speed to be had by doing that step through. Yeah. Whether you can manage that. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Well, he did all right, didn't he? <laughs> I think he won on the tour, didn't he? <laughs> Big shooter. <Yeah. laughs> so this week, should we wrap it up for this week? Yeah, yeah. I think we right. talked a lot of the rubbish, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, shot needs to be open. Yeah. <laughs> so this week coming up, we are at Le Day again. We're just going to finish off what we've done over in France. Are we play the little nine hole. Huh? We do the little <laughs> yes. nine hole at Le Day. Well, I just love the fact that we find these little <laughs> tiny little par three courses. And it we was get really tricky. It was really tough. The greens are really small. But, my short but, short game is not my forte. But the qu they called it a pitch and par. It was harder than that. It was not a pitch and <laughs> no. par. It was a proper proper greens par three. Good as well, yeah. Greens were great. Yeah. Rolling good. And it End does. And it does come down to the last hole. <laughs> Yeah, so at the end of the day, it was oh, really hot. It was a long day as well. Long day. We'd already played 18 holes. We were actually it supposed good. to be I really enough it. to do B-roll, but we found this little course and we thought, we've got to share it. We've yeah. got to share it. So we went and played it. So we've got Lede, and then we, we sit down over a beer and we have a bit of a chat about our experience about playing in France and doing that, your, back, your trip back there for a number of years. Lee's yeah. never played in France. So we just talk a bit, a little bit about that, talk about our experiences, and hopefully when this lockdown is all over, everyone can have an opportunity to get out there and experience what we've experienced yeah. as well. So it'll be some good it's, stuff. Hopefully, it brilliant, out. wasn't it? And you know, yeah. again, thanks to Graham and absolutely the team for um, putting it all on and, and all on. Yeah, it for yeah us. definitely check check out his website and um, absolutely book in with him when you can. In all the course logs that I do, if you go into the descriptions down below, you'll see a link to link to getting out there if you yeah. if you want to make a plan to get out there for next year. Hopefully we'll get out there again one day. We will. We yeah. definitely will. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, me too. Right, I think that concludes our Sunday show. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lester. Thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget, if you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell, because if you ring the bell, you get some notifications on videos that we... And sometimes they go out at random times, don't they? Yeah, we do, yeah. <laughs> Occasionally we do mess up and set them out at midnight. <laughs> Woke everyone up. But we're popular that night, weren't we? <laughs> Thank you very much. See you all again next Sunday.